In the last several years, we've seen some strange genetically modified organisms. Pigs that glow in the dark, chickens that grow without feathers, and even goats that produce spider silk proteins. But what really gets people riled up are genetically modified foods. The prospect of eating somebody's science project turns the stomach of those who aspire to eat so-called whole or natural foods. But what exactly does genetically modified mean anyways? And how are those foods created? To answer these questions, we need to go back in time about 10,000 years. That's when people first started domesticating animals and cultivating plants for food. By picking organisms with desirable traits and mating them together over and over again, people were able to mold species to meet their dietary needs. The classic example is corn, which started out as a tropical grass called teosinti, with small, nearly inedible kernels. Over thousands of years, ancient farmers in Mexico transformed the grass into the delicious, starchy treat we like to eat today. We now know those ancient farmers were manipulating the DNA of the teosinti plant. As few as five changes to its genome, the long strands of DNA that encode for proteins, create the dramatic differences we see between teosinti and corn. Scientists call this process artificial selection, and it's made all kinds of unappetizing plants edible, from wheat to rice to almonds and bananas. What's different about modern genetically modified foods is the speed and precision with which we can make changes. Now, instead of selectively breeding for traits, we can go directly to the DNA responsible, snip it out, and transplant it into newly developing plants and animals. If these snippets come from the same species, scientists call the new organism cisgenic. Cis means the same. But if the DNA comes from a completely different plant or animal, scientists call the new organism transgenic. Trans means to cross. Those fluorescent pigs, they glow green because they contain a gene from a luminescent jellyfish. And in the last 20 years, we've begun to see the food equivalent. Corn that makes bacterial toxins poisonous to pests, tomatoes that make the antifreeze proteins from fish, and even cows that produce human milk. So you may be wondering if this kind of overt manipulation is safe. Well, all of the GM foods currently on the market have been thoroughly tested, but the verdict's still out on some of the more exotic transgenic pairings. Personally, I'm waiting for a tomato that I can cut in the dark. For Scientific American's Instant Egghead, I'm Eric Olson. Thank you.